Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be painting this realistic but fairly simple Easter lily. If you do enjoy this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up and to see more tutorials like this don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump in and get painting. Today I'll be using my Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, jar of water, paper towel. You will also need a pencil and an eraser to sketch this out. And for brushes, I have treated myself to a brand new um, silver black velvet uh, in a size eight round and this is an awesome brush. I'm just getting into using it now, so I thought I would use it for this tutorial. It's got a really um, amazing point on it, so make sure you have a brush that has a decent point. If not, just use a bigger brush for the larger areas and a small brush for the fine detail. So as you can see, I already have my lily all sketched out, and I did it from this reference photo, which I will not be posting um, in the corner of my video for a couple of reasons. I only used it to get the um, the drawing done. I don't want to get bogged down by trying to follow a photo in great detail for all the color and all the details. And I don't want you to get wrapped up in that either. So what I'm going to do is just um, go from my memory from a couple of whoops, a couple of other Lily photos that I downloaded off the internet, and we're just going to pick the key features that I see in them, and that's what we're going to pick up in our painting. Okay, so we can see here that um, the things I want to pick up are uh, the kind of groove that you see down the center of the petals. So that's kind of a key feature. The other ones are these um, stamens and a pistol is that what they're called I'm not sure um, that's what we want to pick up and then the other thing is how this kind of the green kind of comes up from the growth on the inside and that kind of um, fades off into the flower where it turns into white and you also get a bit of yellow highlights from the pollen so those are the features that we want to pick up and that's what I noticed was common in all the photographs that I looked at so that's what we want to keep in mind. That's what we're going to try to pick up rather than getting bogged down about trying to follow one particular photograph. So I hope that makes sense and that you kind of find that a more helpful way to, to do your paintings rather than you know painstakingly try to follow a particular photograph. So I am going to draw this with you on my screen and that will be coming up now and then you can uh, either freeze frame it and take a screenshot and then do your drawing and then follow along for the painting. Okay, so what we need to capture here is the trumpet shape of the lily flower and the fact that the leaves kind of curl out. So I'm going to start with this flower here, or this petal here, and it goes all the way up and curves out, just like that. And then the base of it, you wouldn't see it because of the other petals that are coming out, but you have to kind of draw the base of it just to indicate that's where you would no longer kind of see the petal. Then we're going to have another petal coming out from this way and that's curling out as well. Just like that. And it's going to look a little funny until we really start painting and get like the tonal values on here. So now we're going to do this petal here and that's curving out and down just like so. And then you have to imagine that you're not seeing the petal as it goes in towards the inside of the lily. Okay. But you would see kind of the point where it folds just like that. Okay, so now we've got three petals coming out. This one, we can do the base of that one right here, like that. Okay, now we're going to do one more main petal, which is here. 
and that comes all the way out and looks kind of weird kind of flat at this point but like I say once we get painting and get the tonal values in there it's going to look a lot more believable then we're going to do another petal that's coming out of here and that also curves and we'll do the last one down here so this one is kind of curving down and away so you're not really seeing much beyond this point here you have to imagine that that's kind of curled at the back and it's tucked under there i hope that makes sense then we're going to see the base of the trumpet just through the bottom just here okay then we're going to have stamens and sepals not sepals stamens coming out of the center so there's one main kind of funny one that's kind of kind of bald really is the best way i can describe it and that's going to all go towards the center and down into the inside of that lily and then there's going to be other stamens with little kind of pollen buds on them. Just like that. Then we're also going to draw in just a few leaves. I don't want to focus on the leaves. Actually, we'll start with the stem. Assuming that this is um, right here is the center of the lily then the stem is going to come out like here okay so we're going to draw that in and it's just going to come out right about here and then just to kind of add a little bit more greenery on there we'll do just some pointy lily leaves just like this not too many just enough to give it well that was really well done wasn't it Just like that maybe one finish that leaf there but maybe we'll just do another one here and maybe another one coming off the bottom that was really wobbly let me redo that okay just like that now just to kind of get the idea of where these curves are and the lilies have Kind of a groove in the center of the leaves or the petals but we're not going to you don't really have to draw this in if you do just do it very lightly but this will help us just kind of imagine the curve of the petals and how they're growing so it just makes a little more sense when you see it like this just like that so now you can see that everything is coming out of this center area here okay I have to say I'm probably going to change the way some of these um, stamens are coming out of the middle but you get the idea so that's it for the drawing I'm going to erase my pencil lines so they're even lighter and then we can start painting our lily okay so the first thing I want to do I think is to establish the colors and the tones that are coming out from the center of the lily so I'm going to take my brush and mix up a little bit of sap green and I just want a really light wash of it and I may even put in just a little bit of um, yellow ochre just to make it a little more on the yellow side that was way too much let me try that again okay so I've got this kind of yellowy green and I only want a really light wash of it so I'm going to dip my brush in my water and run it along the edge of my jar till I get most of the pigment off and I just want to first establish this color that's coming out of the center so I'm going to paint some just from the middle of this leaf going down into the center of the lily then I'm going to rinse my brush off get most of the water off it's still fairly wet but not dripping wet and I'm going to fade this out just blend it out like that okay and we're going over where those sepals are that's okay I'm gonna paint those a little darker 
so they should stand out and I'm just going to feather this green out just like that okay so I'm painting wet on dry right now then we can take that same green get a very light wash of it and do the same thing just coming up from this leaf a bit just a little bit on this one not too much okay and again just kind of blend that out we can even take some yellow I've got azo yellow medium and a very light wash of that so I'm getting most of the pigment off my brush and I'm just going to put a little hint of yellow here because we are doing white flowers they're not going to have a lot of tone in them and as you get away from the center you're going to get less of that kind of yellowy reflection I may have even gone a little heavy here just going to tap some of it up okay just like that then the other thing we want to get is those grooves in these leaves okay and I'm just going to use uh, Payne's Gray very watered down that's not very watered down very watered down I could even add a little bit of yellow to that just to give it this kind of yellowy green kind of tone okay and we want to use that very sparingly so I'm going to water it down even more tap some of it off my brush and we're just going to start putting some shadows and highlights on these Lee on these uh, petals so I'm going to start with this one because I know this one's still dry and I'm going to do the groove down the center of the leaf my pencil line is probably a little um, a little heavier than I would want it to be but that's okay and if you find you think it's still a little heavy just tap it lightly with your paper towel you just want the slightest hint of gray on there and then to give that little groove dimension we're gonna go just outside of it just beside it and add another line and that'll give that sense of dimension for that little groove okay do one a little bit on the other side just like the little height of that groove is caught is creating that shadow I'm gonna heavy this up a little bit more so as I said you can see I've got a really nice point on this brush so if you don't have a nice point just make sure you're using the smallest brush you have and I'm just going to soften that shadow out then I'm going to take that same color add a little bit of tone just to one side of this petal just so it doesn't get lost because it is white and then as I as I come into that yellow I'm going to rinse off my brush tap it off my paper towel and just blend it into that yellow just like that okay and we can add a little bit more shadow just closer to the inside like so and if you're losing that kind of yellow look you can just go in and tap in a little bit more yellow And then I'm going to keep cleaning and drying off my brush and just softening these edges. Like so. Okay, so I think now we'll move on to, um, let's do this leaf up here. And then we're going to put a little bit more shading on this because this is further into the back. Okay, so I'm just going to start with my Payne's Gray and I'm going to go right against this edge here like so that was way too heavy let me pick that up
Okay, and I'm going to go right into the center of the flower. Put a little bit more down because we want this to look like it's in the background a little more or in the shade a little more. And I'm going to soften that edge. I'm going to take that gray again and we're going to put that groove in. So I'm just going to go right down the center of that petal. Like so. Then I'm going to turn my board and I'm just going to soften this out. like that and then we can take some more of that Payne's gray shadow color and come right into the t the edge of this main leaf here main petal here I'm not speaking very well today we're going to come all the way up like that clean our brush off tap it off in our paper towel and blend this out then we've got a little bit of a highlight on that edge of that leaf. Then I think I'm going to put a little bit more um, yellow into that area. And just go over it a little bit, just to give it a little bit of yellow. And just be careful to leave that little groove down the middle, okay? And you'll see I'm not following this reference photo anymore. I'm just kind of putting in what I think needs to be put in rather than, you know, holding myself to really trying to match a photograph. So I'm going to go back into the Payne's Gray which still has a little bit of yellow into it. I'm gonna just mix a little bit more. Water it down. Okay. And we'll do this main petal here. Like I say, my um, pencil lines are still a little, little darker than I would like, but actually I'm kind of okay with it in this case with a white flower it's okay to have a pencil line kind of you know define your painting a little bit whoops i didn't mean to do that and i'm just going to soften this out as we get further down the petal so clean my brush off and just blend this out i'm just my brush is almost dry now, so I'm just dragging this pigment out to fade it out. Just like that. And I think at this point, now that I've got the uh, petal color in place, I'm just gonna pick up a little highlight here. Um, so now that I've got that petal color in place, I think I can heavy up that kind of green that's coming down the center. So I'm going to bring that down again, just like that. And we will again soften this too. So I'm just rinsing off my brush tapping it off on my paper towel and just softening that edge. I could even make that a little grayer by just tapping in some Payne's Gray so it's not such a vibrant green. And then I think what I'll do is just wiggle this out a bit. Just like that. So now we're going to move on to this petal here, which is really curved over and curved under. 
So I want to have a bit of a shadow here just on that edge and that will help define that kind of curve that it's creating and I'm just going to bring it into the middle a bit and then also do that little line that's down the middle of each petal. I'm going to rinse off my brush and just soften that out just like that. Now looking at this, I can kind of think maybe I've gone a little dark on this petal, so I'm just going to re-wet this. I love this brush, but it's not very stiff, so it's not, you know, the best for picking up or scrubbing pigment, or scrubbing your paper. But I think that'll do. And then just to accentuate the curve on that one, we're just going to go in and just tap a little bit of shadow in here. And again, soften that out. It was just looking a little flat. I wanted just a little more um, differentiation between the actual whole petal and some of the shaded areas. So I like what's going on with that one there. I'm going to take a little bit of that green, I think, and just make that just a little, little more on the green side. And then go back in, put a little bit of shading here where it folds, not doesn't fold, but where it rolls under. Okay. And you can also just, if you have a really fine point, you can also just draw these lines out because the leaves do have kind of texture to them. I just didn't want to get so realistic and have to worry about all these little kind of stripey veins in the petals. I don't want to get carried away with that. So we'll just soften that a bit. And then we'll go on to this leaf here. and that yellowy Payne's Gray mixture. I just need a little bit more yellow. Okay, so it's like a nice greeny gray. And actually I think I'll do this petal here. So I'm going to put some shadow in here because that's where it kind of goes into the center of the flower. Okay, just like that. Bring it down a bit. Go in with some clean water and just drag this out to soften that shadow. And when you do that, just go in and clean your brush off a bit so you're not just adding more paint. You're just going in with clean water, just like that. And then just to give the petal a little bit of shape, we'll bring that line down again. And we'll put some shading on this edge of the petal. And again on this other side and that will just give it a little bit of a kind of a little depth and shape okay so I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and bring this up just to blend it out you can blend it into the paint so it doesn't come out too far blend this way Okay, like that. So that's looking pretty good. So we've got a little bit of a shadow here, shadow here, which makes this look like a like a highlight highlighted area. I can't speak very well today. A little highlighted area. I'm gonna actually even give it just a little more 
on this end. Okay, so it seems to be getting a little bit of depth now. I'm going to take this gray green mixture and come back into here and add a little bit more tone in here just to create even more depth. Okay, so while it's still wet, I'm going to go in, clean off my brush, tap it off my paper towel and just soften this out. Okay, so you can see when I'm pushing, I'm just pushing more pigment out. So that means I've got to clean off my brush again. Okay, and just keep softening it. So you can see how that's creating some nice depth now. Okay, and if I didn't clean off my brush, I would just be continually pushing paint around and I want to fade it out. So you, that's why you want to go in with clean water. So now we'll go on to this petal here, do the same thing. I'm going to mix more of that greeny gray. And I'm going to make sure that we get a bit of that groove in the petal, like so. And I'm going to come down this edge just to define it a little bit and do that same thing where we clean off our brush and just blend it out until it just softens off to nothing. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit more green pigment and this will be going into the center of the flower just like that. Okay. And I'm going to clean, dry off my brush and drag that out. Now, if I step back and look at this, I'm not getting as much dimension on this leaf. So I'm going to add a little bit more shading down there. Okay, and then I think because this one is behind, we could even afford to put a little bit more of that kind of greeny gray just in the very inside of this petal. So you can kind of see why I didn't want to follow a photograph because I don't want to be tied to really going out of my way and painstakingly matching a photo. If we can just put in highlights and shadows that just kind of give it that kind of depth, then that's really all you need. Like I think in this one, we can probably afford to go back in and add just a little more as if the other petals are casting a shadow on it. Okay. We can maybe accentuate that groove a little more as well so I could heavy that up and we're going to blend this shadow out and if I go beside that line that's going to accentuate the depth of that groove again we kind of lost that when I did it the first time so just put that back in Just like that, and we'll blend that out too. And this is looking a little smooth and flat, so I think I'll go in and add just a little more to this edge here. Not right to the edge of the petal, because I want it to make it look like it's got a little bit of a scoop in it. Okay, just so it's not so flat. And I think that works. Might be a little heavy, but it's not too bad.
then I think again to accentuate this curve we can kind of heavy up this just a little bit more really make it look like it's curving so if I put some at the base and some at the tip that means the light is hitting that kind of curved part and that should give it more shape then I'll blend this out as well like that and I think I want to add just a little bit more yellow or yellowy green actually just to the inside just so it's got that real lily kind of color okay and I will soften that out as well and I think while that dries we can't go in and do the stamens and stuff in the middle until this is completely dry so let's go in and put some leaves in actually I missed a little bit of an area under here that is also part of the flower just gonna make more of that yellowy gray so I want that on hand and I'm just gonna put some of it just in this little area under here that's like the trumpet shape of the lily and I want to make sure that's in there so for the sake of keeping this video reasonably short um, the leaves are pretty simple so I'm just going to do a quick voice over with this I've gone in with some sap green with a little bit of um, that yellow in it and I'm just painting in really simple pointed leaves I decided that that color was a little pale so I added some ultramarine deep and the thing to just keep in mind here is that just keep these simple but you don't want them to go really flat so you see here I'm adding um, extra pigment on some of the edges dragging it out just to give them a little bit of dimension I am avoiding the stem because I want to make sure that that shows up so I'm going to be painting that a little bit of a lighter color just so it picks up against the backdrop of the dark leaves um, yeah so that's basically pretty simple just add in some shading I started off light because I didn't want to overdo it so you just see me here adding in darker tones and then we'll go in because this area is all dry now and we'll do our little sepals and whatnot so I'm going to do the yellow first and I'm just going to use azo yellow medium and I think maybe I don't want to make it too orange um, I might just put a little teensy bit of permanent red light in here just to give it a little bit of an orangey tone and I'm just going to do those little pollen bulbs like that there's one two one kind of coming up that way and I think I want to make this kind of go in a little bit of a different direction How many have we got there? Four. Let's do five. Let's do one here. Again, I'm not following the photograph. Then I want to go in, get a yellowy green. Now, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush, and just with the very tip of it, 
Okay, we're going to start getting these little sepals in here that go right down to the center of that lily. Now, ideally, we would have, you know, either masked these out or um, painted around them. But I, like I said, I, this wasn't about, you know, making some hyper realistic painting. So as long as they're kind of indicated there, that's really all we need. And if you think they're a little heavy, I think they are. I'm just going to go in and just lightly tap them up a bit, just like that. And then there's that funny little, I think you call it a pistol or something, a pistol, 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 I really don't know. Um, so I'm going to use Payne's Gray for that because we have to go a little darker um, than really what you may have seen in your photograph or whatever, but we're just doing it for the sake of, well, we're going to take our creative license here and just assume that we can do that. So I'm going to kind of draw it with my paintbrush. Okay, just so we can put these edges in that we can kind of see. Even though it's not going to be perfectly realistic this way. But we're going to get the effect, I think. And I've kind of mushed my paint too much, so I'm just going to tap that up. Just like that. So you get the effect that something's there. Even though it may be a little darker than we would really want from our photograph. And then bring this all the way into the center. Like so. Put a little shadow on it. Like that. Go in and get some of that green. like that. Okay, so at this point, I'm just speeding this up because I've, I've basically um, decided that everything is established where I want it. And I just stepped away for a bit, came back and looked at it and just felt that there were some areas that needed to be kind of heavied up. So your shadow areas are already established. So just take a look at it and just kind of add a little more tone where you think it might be needed just to make things pop a little bit. And there you go. There is your realistic but still fairly simple Easter lily. This just shows you that um, really just follow a reference photo for what it is, a reference photo. Don't try to, you know, drive yourself nuts trying to match it exactly. Um, so I hope you found this kind of approach helpful and I hope you learned something. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.